Hello students, I'm here in the skills lab and I'm going to show you some of the uh, unique skills that uh, we will be using in the labor and delivery unit. So I'm just going to move my camera down here so you can see that we have our patient here. Um, yes, she is headless, but she has the rest of the parts. So I'm going to show you how we would put a patient on the fetal monitor. So inside here, you'll see that I have my mom that has her tummy, and I'm going to do a maneuver called Leopold's maneuver to help determine which position my baby is facing. I wanna make sure that the baby's head down, and we're gonna talk about exactly what it is that we're feeling for um, in class, but I just wanna show you how to put this patient on the monitor. Um, so you're going to feel where the baby is. You're going to try to find the back of the baby. That's how these monitors work uh, the best. So you have two monitors here. This one is the ultrasound. You'll be putting ultrasound gel here, and you can see that it is a smooth surface. And then once you place that on the mom, you will hear the fetal heart rate. And I'll be playing you some videos of what that actually feels like. You might see a couple of different securing devices. We have some straps that look like this that will hold this monitor on. And it doesn't matter which color goes to which monitor, but, um, and then it will come around the other side and strap down. And depending on the facility you're at, these straps may look different, but they serve the same purpose. So then you also have this monitor, which is called an external uh, monitor, a tocometer. Toc this is going to pick up contractions. You see that it has the button here. It literally is just putting, uh, sitting on the top of the belly, the fundus, and it is going to pick up movement. It does not tell us how strong they are, just picks up movement. So here, I would place this here at the hard area, and again, use my strap to hold that down. So both of these are going to plug into the electronic fetal monitor, and in another lecture, we will be discussing that at length of what it is that we're looking for. The other skill that we utilize in our OB rotation is doing a fundal height. And this is something that you as students can do as well. And you'll use a tape measure. They're a single patient use. And you want to measure the from the xiphoid process, which is the bottom of the sternum, all the way down to the symphysis pubis, which is the top of the pubic bone. And we do this in centimeters. And that measurement should be close to the gestational age. So for instance, I'm measuring here and she's 40 centimeters, so she should be about 40 weeks gestational age. So again, we'll talk about the clinical significance of this. Once we um, get into clinic, I just wanted to show you how to do it. The other thing I wanted to mention here, so you always wanna make sure that you give your mom um, her privacy, but when we're doing an assessment on a mom, we're looking for specific things. I'm going to turn my camera up here so you can see me. Um, we're looking for specific things. It's really a focused assessment. For the most part, women that come in to have babies are healthy women and don't have necessarily any um, major comorbidities. So when we're walking in saying, hi, my name is Leah, I'm going to be your nurse today. We're doing our neurological assessment. She answers back. She's alert and oriented. Um, we are going to ask her if she has any health problems, anything besides pregnancy, if she's had any pregnancy specific problems. We have those privacy questions that we're going to ask her. Have you been pregnant with um, any other pregnancies, miscarriages, abortions that no one else knows about, any history of drug use, smoking, alcohol with the pregnancy, history of sexually transmitted diseases, psychological problems, thoughts of committing suicide or, or self-harm. Or, and any um, problems with domestic violence, this partner or previous partner. Obviously those questions have to be asked privately and we will talk more about that as we um, go further in our clinic orientation. But when we're doing a focused assessment, we're going to obviously going to be taking our vital signs. We don't have CNAs on the OB floor. That's something that we do ourselves. And then we are going to listen to her lungs. We will use our tool to um, listen, well, we'll listen to her heart with the stethoscope, and then the fundal height, which I already showed you. And then we would use a tool, something like this, to check her reflexes. And we will be testing this on each other in the clinic site, um, but we wanna make sure we know how to look at those patellar reflexes and the um, reflexes that you, you can get on your arm. And super important that we know her baseline in order to know uh, if something's going on. So 
we need to know what's normal in order to know what's not normal. And then lastly, we're going to check for clonus. And again, that is probably fairly unique to labor and delivery. We're looking at the excitement of her nervous system. And that's as far as I'm gonna go into that right now. I'm gonna pause the video for just a minute and I'm gonna show you the assessment that we will do on a delivered mom. So now you can see that our baby has been delivered, baby skin to skin with mom, and they're getting to know each other a little bit. And we're going to do something called a fundal exam. So we are going to uncover her so that we can find the top of that uterus. And I'm gonna turn this just a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna take my baby off so that you can see. We're going to find the top of that uterus and we're measuring a couple of things. This is after the baby's been born and we are going to be looking at where the uterus is inside the body in relationship to the umbilicus, the umbilical cord. And we're going to be determining how firm it is. And we're going to be watching the blood flow that comes when we do this massage. So as I am um, telling the mom what I'm going to do, I'm gonna do a little fundal massage to make sure that your uterus is staying nice and firm because we don't want you to bleed too much. I'm gonna put a little pressure down below which is just going to add support. If the mom has had a cesarean section, I will um, that will be covered by something, either a, um, a sterile gauze or possibly even some glue. And so I'll put, uh, my hands are gloved and I will put a little pressure down below and I'm going to start and I'm going to feel the top of that uterus and determine if it's firm or not. Then I'm going to measure where it is in relationship to the umbilicus, so is it one finger below, two fingers below, three fingers uh, below, or one finger above, two fingers above, three fingers above, and then that's going to be what I'm going to document so that the next nurse taking care of her will know where it started, and then I'm going to be watching the blood flow, making sure that we don't have large clots, and in our current um, labor and delivery units, we're using QBO, which is quantitative blood loss. We measure all of that blood loss. And, and we're going to make sure that um, we're not meeting our hemorrhage stages. So that is the assessment that we would do on the mom. I'm gonna move this mom model over and talk about what the assessment that we would do on the baby. Give me just a minute to grab my tools. Okay, so now we have our baby and um, they've been, mom and baby have been skin to skin and the baby's had their first feeding and it's time for us to do our newborn assessment. There's some very good videos on ATI and on my YouTube video list about doing a newborn assessment, the initial newborn assessment. The assessment that you're going to do every time you go into the room is going to be a little bit of a um, quicker assessment and I wanna just give you an idea of what it is that we're looking for. So when we're listening to those baby's vitals, we're going to use a stethoscope that is appropriate for the size of the baby. If you don't, if, if you don't have the type of stethoscope that you can turn and use the smaller bell, you're welcome to use mine when you're in clinic. And then when you're listening here to your baby's heart rate, you wanna put it, um, if the baby has a t-shirt on, it's okay to be on top of that t-shirt or you'll have to warm it up so you don't startle the baby. So you'll listen to this baby's heart rate for at least 30 seconds. And then of course you're looking, you want the number for the entire minute. So if you're listening for 30 seconds, you're going to um, obviously double that. But for the respiratory rate, you're going to listen for a full minute because babies have some unusual breathing sometimes. They have um, uh, periods of apnea. And so they may actually hold their breath for 10 or 15 seconds and then catch up, do some catch up breathing. So you want to listen to this baby's respiratory rate for, in for a full minute. When we're taking the temperature, 
Um, I don't have a temperature probe right here, so I'm just gonna pretend this is one. So when we're taking the temperature of this baby, we wanna make sure that we're putting that temperature probe up underneath that baby's arm, and then we have to hold the arm down. If, you are use, if you're going this direction, you wanna make sure that the tip is not poking out the end because then you won't be getting an accurate temperature. So you want to hold that down, and this is how we're going to get the baby's temp. We're going to do the temp last because this sometimes irritates the baby and then they'll be crying and it'll be very difficult to hear their heart and lungs. The other thing we're always going to look at is we want to look at this baby's tone. We want to look at the color. We should never see any central cyanosis in this area. It is okay for the hands and the feet to have a little bit of bluish tint that's called acrocyanosis and that's normal, but we'd never want to see any central cyanosis. If the baby starts to choke when you're in the room, um, they have some fluid sometimes that needs to uh, be brought back up that we would use the bulb syringe. You squeeze it, put it in the side of their mouth, suck out whatever's there, squeeze it out, squeeze it again, put it in the side of their mouth, suck out whatever's there. You don't wanna go straight back because you're gonna initiate the gag reflex. And so we want to try to help them clear those secretions. Very important that you're talking your way through this when you're doing that so that you're also educating the parents at the same time. And we wanna make sure that the bulb syringe is within arm's reach. Every time we communicate with the parents, we wanna know how the feedings are going, when is the last time they fed, and what our current diaper count is, if they've changed any wet or dirty diapers. Um, I think that's all I'm gonna show you in this video, and I'll see you soon.